So it's time to start uh, the next talk for this afternoon session. Dan Parashit from University of Barcelona will uh, will speak about Newton-like behavior in the Chebyshev Halley family. Uh, oh, of degree and polynomials. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer very much for inviting me to talk today. Today I'm going to present uh, a work in progress which is part of my PhD thesis, which I realized under the supervision of uh, Xavier Rarke and Jordi Canella. So let, without further ado, let's move on. The most well-known uh, numerical method is Newton's method for uh, real number. Of course, this method has been used to generate complex dynamical systems and especially its applications to polynomial of the gradient are very well known. Now we are going to study the family of methods called chebyshev halley which is defined as follows. Some things about these numerical methods, generally they have uh, order of convergence three compared with Newton, which has two, except for one parameter, which has uh, order of convergence four. For alpha equal to zero, this is this method is Chebyshev method for alpha equal one over two. This is the Halley method. And for alpha equal to one, this is known as the super Halley method. Observe that as alpha approaches infinity, this uh, Chebyshev Halley method resembles the Newton method. Now, the first people to study the Chebyshev Halley method from a complex dynamic point of view are Campos, Canard, Lyons, and Dell. And they have studied the, the maps obtained by applying the, the chebyshev halley method to polynomials of the type d to the power of n plus c. First of all, they have proven that for any complex parameter c, the map obtained by applying chebyshev halley to z to the power of n plus c is conjugated to the map obtained by applying chebyshev halley to z to the power of n minus one. So in the end, it starts for us to only study one family, one map from the entire family, which will be the map uh, obtained by applying the Chebyshev Halley method, method to z to the power of n minus one, and we'll denote it by O n alpha. Now, this is exp the expression of O n alpha. Of course, you can observe that it is not very easy to work directly with such a method, but we must point out that the degree of the map is 2n that the degree of the denominator is 2n minus 1. So infinity is a fixed point. And the 0 maps to infinity with degree n minus 1. This is a, an example of dynamical plane of a map of the chebyshev halley family applied to z to the power of n minus 1 for n equal to 2. Well, what can we see in this picture? You have to take my word for this, but in here we have three immediate basins of attraction corresponding to the roots of the equation z to the power of three minus one, one c c squared. We can we see very clearly, and also it, it is proven that the map presents symmetry with respect to rotation by two pi over n. In our case, n equal to three, so two pi over three. We have the following critical point. So I'm now going to talk in a general n case, not just n equal to three. We have that zero mapped to degree n minus one to infinity. So it's a critical point of multiplicity n minus two. We have that the n critical points, the n super attracting fixed points, which are the root of zero to the power of n minus one are, have local degree three. So they have multiplicity two. And since the map has local has a degree two n, we have that we must have four n minus two critical points. We are left with n three critical points. By the symmetry of the map, we have that uh, each basin of attraction can have at most one critical point, except for the super attracting fixed point. Now, 
Also, uh, Campos, Canela, and Vinzel have studied the possible connectivities of a two component in the Chebyshev Halley method. And they have obtained a trichotomy in respect to the immediate basis of attractions of the roots uh, of the unity. And they have proven that the only possibility for an immediate basis of attraction to not be simply connected is when such an immediate basis of attraction contains a critical point different from uh, the root of the unity, but no pre image of uh, the root of the unity except for itself. Now, it might be said that for uh, immediate basis of attraction, the connectivities can only be one or infinity, which is the result of the other. So when we say that it is multiply connected, in fact, we say that they are infinitely connected, as we have clearly seen in the previous picture. Let's move on to the main result. First of all, is theorem A, which I have proven, and then will be a conjecture that is work in progress. So what is the statement of theorem A? Consider f of z equal to z to the power of n minus one, and let O and alpha be the map obtained by applying the Chebyshev Halley method to it, such that the immediate basis of attraction of one is not simply connected. So it is infinitely connected. Then there exists a connected component of the Julia set, which is a quasi conformal copy of the Julia set of NFN, where NFN is the map obtained by applying Newton's method to the polynomial FN. The conjecture, which is I'm still working currently on, says that for large enough real parameters alpha, there exist uh, parameters alpha such that uh, the conditions of theorem A are satisfied. This has been proven for n equal to two by Campos, Canela, and Pinzel. I am currently doing some computational work to finish the case n equal to three. And of course, I plan to do in the future the, all, the entire general case. This is the dynamical plane for the Newton, for the map obtained by applying Newton's method to z to the power of three minus one. Of course, we have the three immediate basins of attraction. And now let's see the image of our map. So the statement of theorem A, in the end, it comes down to saying that this connected component in the, Cheb in the Chebyshev Halley family is a quasi conformal copy of the Julia set in here. Before being able to proceed to the proof of the theorem, we must state two results. The first one is obtained by me, and it is like this assume that the immediate basis of attraction of one is not simply connected. Then there exists two analytic curves in the immediate basis of attraction, which we'll call gamma minus one and gamma, such that gamma minus one maps to gamma with the grid two, and gamma lies in the interior of gamma. Of gamma lies in the interior of gamma minus one. The second result that will be critical in our proof is a theorem that we have found in a paper by Tanley, but in there it was stated as a result of the PhD thesis of Head from 1987. So, for any rational map of the grid D with D distinct superattracting fixed point, we have that it is conjugated by Mobius transformation to a map obtained by applying Newton's method to a polynomial if z equal to infinity is not super attracting and infinity is a fixed point. Now this is the, this is where we are going to see all that we have talked about until now. First of all, let me explain the situation inside the immediate basis of attraction of one. Remember that since our map is symmetric with respect to rotation, we have that to, Proving statement for one for the immediate basis of one will automatically imply the statement is proven for all the other basins of attraction. So, first, since one is a super attractive fixed point, we have that uh, there exists two uh, maximal domain of the Boucher coordinate. We consider V its image. And now we consider the, the image of the boundary of V. Well, the image of the boundary of V is composed of two 
Jordan curve. One of them, which we'll call gamma one, surrounds this component of the Julia set. And in fact, it will also bound a pole in that region. And by proving that uh, this uh, gamma one maps to the boundary of B with degree one, we will be able to say that gamma two, the other boundary component in here, will have to map with degree two the boundary of B. This allows us to take to consider two curves, gamma minus one and gamma, such that gamma minus one maps to gamma with degree two. Now that we have uh, such a let's say polynomial like construction, but it does not help us in any way like this. We can use quasi conformal surgery to construct a quasi regular map, which we'll call big F. But for the moment, we will construct a quasi regular map, small f, which let's call it F1, which is defined in the immediate basin of one. This is quite a standard quasi conformal surgery construction because we will consider a Riemann map on the interior of gamma minus one. And we'll have that our, we can construct a quasi regular map F, which will be conjugated on the interior of, uh, of uh, gamma by the Riemann map to Z squared, which is, con and the map F is conjugated on the interior of this annulus bounded by gamma minus one and gamma. It is conjugated by the Riemann map and the quasi conformal map to also to the square. And in the exterior of gamma minus one, but still in the immediate basin of attraction of one, our map F1 will be O and alpha. Now we can simply extend this quasi regular map. We extend it to the entire complex sphere. We say that big F is equal to F1, so if uh, Z lies in the immediate basin of one, equal to C to the power of I F of uh, C to the power of minus I Z. If Z lies in the immediate basin of uh, uh, C to the power of I, and O and alpha in the rest of the complex here. So we are, we have now uh, a quasi regular map bigger, which is defined everywhere. We use this quasi regular map to construct uh, an F invariant, Beltrami coefficient, but we want this uh, Beltrami coefficient to not be only F invariant, but also rotation invariant. So up to this point, our construction is similar to a construction of McMullen from his 1988 article, Automorphism of Rational Map. But the main difference between this construction and the construction of McMullen is that we will preserve the symmetries and several other properties of the map. And we will use them to show that not only the map that F is conjugated to is a quasi rational map, but it, is, it has some very specific properties. And in the end, it will be actually the Newton method applied to z to the power of n minus one. The way we construct this uh, F invariant by time coefficient is the most easy, possibly the easiest way. We, we start from the standard complex structure in the interior of uh, gamma, and we just keep pulling back in, uh, in, the, in the basin of attraction of the root of the unit. Of course, we will complete with uh, circles in the rest of the complex sphere, and we will obtain uh, a Beltrami coefficient, which is both F invariant and rotation invariant. Now, having this allows, having this F invariant Beltrami coefficient allows us to obtain a quasi conformal map by uh, solving the equation. To show that this quasi conformal map also preserves uh, the rotation symmetry, we can see that it's a map, call it 
if the initial rotation, if the initial passive conformal map is T0, call the next, call the new map fix C, and fix C will be the rotation by C composed with uh, P0, composed with the inverse of the rotation by C. We prove that this new map and uh, our initial solution of the Beltrami equation, they solve the same equation. And in fact, by using computations, we prove that they coincide. If, this, if these two maps coincide, it means that the quasi conformal map also commutes in respect with the rotation, and it also concerns the rotation. Now we are finally able to consider the quasi rational map that is conjugated to the big F that we have constructed. This one is uh, conjugated to, to F by a map which also conserves the symmetry. So we have to obtain that this new map also is symmetric, also has the property of symmetry with respect to rotation by two pi over n. This map also has uh, n super attracting fixed point. And by computation of the quasi conformal map, we also have that. Uh, Yes, there is one. There is one side like this, but uh, I was presenting with a picture for. So, in the end, we obtain a map, which is. Uh, op we obtain that the quasi-regular map F that we have constructed all over the complex sphere, is uh, quasi-conformally conjugated to a map obtained by applying uh, Newton's method to z to the power of n plus c to the power of n. Finally, we have the z to the power of n, the, new, the map obtained by applying Newton's method to z to the power of n plus c to the power of n is conjugated by the map cz to the map obtained by applying Newton's method to the map z to the power of n minus one. So after all these arguments, we obtain that the quasi-regular map f obtained by quasi-conformal surgery is conjugated to the map obtained the map N, F, N. After considering the field Julia set of the, of the two maps, we obtain that there exists a connected component, this one, which is a quasi conformal uh, connected component of the field Julia set of, uh, of the map of an alpha. Which is just a quasi conformal copy of the Julia step of NF3. And this concludes the proof of theorem A. Now, I want to discuss uh, the, the existence of parameters for which uh, the infinitely connected uh, immediate basis of attraction takes place. I'm going to start by analyzing the case n equal to 2 which was uh, studied by Campos, Canela, and Vindel. And then I'm going to go to the case n equal to three and see why many of these useful properties are lost. So consider alpha greater than zero real. For large and alpha alpha, we have the following properties. First of all, we see that the map is of the form z to the power of three multiplied by z minus a over one minus a z for alpha. Remember, for a real, because alpha is real. This family of maps was studied by Jordi Canella, and he has proven that for uh, alpha, for a between zero and one, this uh, kind of maps have the Julia set as the unit circle. However, since we are going for alpha large enough, and implicitly a large enough, we will not be able to use this kind of nice property. And instead, we, it will suffice for us symmetry with respect to a, a circle centered on the origin. Next, let's count the poles and the zeros of the map. So as we can clearly see, infinity has a map to itself to degree three, and also has another pre-image at one over eight. Since one, since a 
is very big, we have that uh, one over a is smaller than one. The same for zero, which is also a super attraction fixed point in this particular case, we have that uh, zero map to solve the grid three. And there is another pre image, which, however, lies between the pole and infinity. So, with respect to the real line, we don't have nice things. We cannot say we have just one, uh, the intersection of the immediate basin of one with, uh, I'm sorry, the intersection of the immediate basin of infinity with the real line is not just one uh, simply connected component. It has several components. So we cannot just brute for this. And first we have to remark that there exists to P greater than zero, such that uh, all numbers greater than P belong to the immediate basin of infinity. They prove the existence of a critical point C greater than zero, such that the critical value corresponding to that uh, critical point lies in the immediate basin of attraction of infinity. However, this is the point where they stop because the objective of their proof was showing that there exists, uh, there are, there, for alpha large enough, there are no critical points which do, there are no parameters for which do not exist critical points which lie in the immediate basin, which lie in the basin of attraction of infinity. However, because for us in the in the infinitely connected case, we need to study the, the existence of both a critical point and the non-existence of a pre-image of the super attracting fixed point in the immediate basin of attraction, we can immediately prove from this statement that C actually lies in the immediate basin of attraction of infinity by counting the pre-images of infinity. Consider U, the path to compose the pre-image of the immediate basin where C may lie. Then you map the degree at least two to the immediate basin. This gives us five or more three images of infinity, which of course is impossible for a map of degree four. Now let us go to the case n equal to three. Well, first of all, for the case n equal to three, the map is no longer similar to a blast product. And to try to involve a similar argument, we use conjugation by one over z minus one, such that one goes to infinity. I mean, the super attracting fixed point one of O3 alpha becomes the super attracting fixed point of the degree, or local degree three of F. And the infinity, which for alpha large enough was a repelling fixed point in the, in, uh, for O3 alpha, is now going to be the repelling fixed point at z equal to zero. For this map F, we prove once again that there exists P such that for Z greater than P, all the points lie in the immediate basin of attraction of infinity. We prove a, the existence of a critical point which lies between zero and the pre-image of Z equal to zero. And the critical value will also certainly lie in uh, the immediate basin of attraction of infinity. Finally, we want to complete the proof uh, for n equal to three by using the Schwarz reflection principle and connectivity of other components to show that the critical point belongs to the immediate basin. So this is not proven. I have not proven this yet. I have also not proven yet uh, the necessary statements for the pre-images of infinity that they do not lie in the immediate basin. And of course, this is what I'm planning to do in the future. And I have to remind that at this point, all of these results are mainly computational. So it will be very hard extending them to and I'm intending to make them in nicer arguments to not involve so many computations. So that at the end, I can say that for any n greater or equal than three, the necessary parameters exist. Thank you very much. Thank you for an interesting talk. Are there any questions, comments? No questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.